A tropical wave is heading into the Caribbean, but this is nothing compared to what's potentially coming starting in August. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what's happening in the tropics right now and what to expect going forward. In my previous video, we got a lot of people watching from the Caribbean, which is awesome. I appreciate all the new people watching, and it's great to see that people are paying attention to the tropics, even though things are pretty quiet right now. But just wait, things are likely to get more active in the not too distant future. Also, if you're new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more tropical weather updates. Here's a live look at the satellite imagery across the Atlantic. And we have this tropical wave that's pretty close to moving into the Eastern Caribbean over the next day or two. But to be honest, this tropical wave is pretty weak. And so it's not gonna bring more than just, just some rain, really just some showers and thunderstorms. And then we have, off the coast of Africa, we have this area of showers and thunderstorms that's not very impressive either, just showers and thunderstorms, really. But the NHC does not have any areas to watch in the Atlantic over in the main development region. We do have this big non-tropical, extra-tropical occluded low-pressure system. We have really an occluded front up here going down into a cold front that goes out towards the southeastern U.S. And disconnected from that, we have this area of low pressure with thunderstorms moving towards Texas. And this actually has a 10% chance of tropical cyclone formation from the NHC, but it's not expected to develop at all. Now, where things do get interesting is we have over Central America, a lot of showers and thunderstorms. This actually does have potential to develop into a tropical system at some point during the next week or two and can spin up multiple tropical systems. We have this area to watch right here in the central and eastern Pacific, south of Hawaii. This could turn into a small tropical cyclone as well. Now, here's what the NHC has for, for this. So in the eastern Pacific, there's a disturbance, Invest 97, uh, well southeast of the Hawaiian Islands, formation chance through 48 hours is 40%, with a 60% chance of tropical cyclone formation in the next seven days. And this has gone up over the past couple days. So this has been there for a little bit. And so it could turn into a tropical depression during this weekend or early next week, according to the NHC. Then we have this area to watch off the southwestern coast of Mexico with a 30% chance of tropical cyclone formation in the next seven days. The Atlantic has basically nothing except this area to watch with a 10% chance of formation. This is not going to do anything. So really no tropical cyclone activity expected from the NHC in the next seven days. But here's the GFS model from tropicaltidbits.com. There's this weak tropical wave. You can barely even, even notice it moving towards the Caribbean this weekend. This is going into tomorrow morning just bringing rain over some of the islands in the Eastern Caribbean, but then starts bringing more rain towards Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and then really disappears without doing anything. Notice that there's a somewhat moderate wind shear, 14 knots of wind shear apparently going into tomorrow morning. Moderate wind shear and really not a lot of moisture, so this is not favorable for any tropical cyclone potential. And that really just disappears. Then we have this tropical wave action going on next week. So the middle of next week, Wednesday, July 30th, this starts to turn into a low pressure system and heads towards the Caribbean. But then notice what happens. It actually falls apart. So as it's, as it's turning into something, you do have 11 knots of wind shear, which is not terrible, but it's not extremely favorable either. But there is enough moisture at first. But then as it moves into the Caribbean, the wind shear increases to 14 knots, 72% relative humidity. That's still not terrible, but not super favorable either. But then all that shear does destroy the system pretty quickly with 27 knots of wind shear. That's definitely unfavorable and 65% humidity. So this is falling apart as it reaches the Caribbean. That's actually pretty much it for the Atlantic. There's nothing happening all the way into August 8th. There's no tropical activity, at least in the Atlantic, but a previous run of the GFS, the 12Z run, actually did show th that tropical disturbance actually turning into a pretty strong tropical storm moving into the 
Caribbean, potentially causing some impacts before it would actually move south of Jamaica and actually disappear. So this does have some slight tropical potential, but not really. But it is something to watch over the next couple weeks, but no well-defined tropical system is really expected. Here's a look at the moisture on the GFS, and you can just see that, yeah, some of these tropical waves are bringing in moisture, but there's a ton of this really dry air and a lot of Saharan dust also that's that's very unfavorable. Then you have wind shear, and part of that is going to be this very significant high-pressure ridge over the Atlantic that is pulling in dry air, some shear in different places. And also there's a lot of a lot of frontal activity moving off the eastern U.S. And that's actually generating shear, of course, as well, making even the western Caribbean and the central part of the Atlantic pretty unfavorable. But th the tropical waves moving off of Africa are really not very impressive. That's going to be a problem because then you don't have that much there for tropical cyclone formation. Here's a look at the Euro model showing the same thing. Just just some rain, just showers and thunderstorms moving into the Caribbean this weekend into early next week. And then we do see that that storm system around July 30th again. So this is something to watch for sure as both models are showing potential with this. And it does try to organize just a little bit, but then it hits the Caribbean, falls apart before going into August 6th, August 7th, it does actually try to become an area of low pressure off the eastern U.S., off the east coast of the U.S. Now, that could be a tropical system or not, but it, it does try to become an area of low pressure at least before it does emerge with a frontal system. That would be an extra tropical storm at that point by August 9th. Here's the GEFS ensemble forecast. They're showing really nothing with the tropical wave this weekend, and then a, a very weak signal for a tropical system moving towards the Caribbean around August 2nd. And then after that, still showing a whole bunch of nothing in the Atlantic, but uh, notice there's a whole lot of activity across the Eastern Pacific. So here's the GFS model. This is actually a significant notice. This is Already by July 30th, you have a 984 millibar hurricane potentially off the coast of southwestern Mexico. And then this actually rapidly intensifies down to 961 millibars by July 31st. So next Thursday evening, you have a 961 millibar category three hurricane potentially on the GFS model right off the coast of southwestern Mexico. And this is a pretty big deal. It gets really close to the coast, and then it's 970-something millibars around August 1st, and then it escapes off the west coast of Mexico without without causing significant impacts, but notice all that moisture actually around August 3rd into August 4th, you have a lot of that moisture surges north into the southwestern U.S., especially getting into Arizona and potentially New Mexico. So, it is bringing a lot of moisture pretty far north. And then behind that, there's potentially another system that could rapidly intensify by around August 8, getting down to like 966 millibars or something like that. So another potential major hurricane. That's pretty interesting because the GFS is definitely showing that the Eastern Pacific could actually finally start to heat up after a month without any tropical activity. The last storm was Hurricane Flossie. So the, the last storm was Flossie on July 3rd. So that after a month of inactivity, we finally have some tropical development expected. The next two storms on the list for the Eastern Pacific hurricane season are Gill and Henriette. E Here's a look at the GEFS ensembles showing for the Eastern Pacific. A lot of tropical activity starts going around that July 29th time frame, and then it really expands from there. You could have some activity moving very close to the southwestern coast of Mexico, or it could actually stay out further out in the eastern Pacific. So there's quite a bit of variability with the, with the potential tracks of this storm system because it hasn't even, it hasn't even formed yet, so it's going to be impossible to predict exactly where it's going to go. It hasn't even happened yet. Uh, then, going into August 2nd, this moves off away from land areas, 
but then it just drifts out into the eastern Pacific. But some of that moisture will move into the southwestern U.S. And then by August 6th or so, it looks like a, another storm system starts going. It could strengthen very quickly, and this this really expands a lot, by a lot, with a lot of potential out there for a tropical storm or a hurricane out in the eastern Pacific going into, really starting at the end of July next week, going all the way into August 10th. And this actually lines up with what the Climate Prediction Center is showing. They're showing for week two, there's a, uh, for July 30th to August 5th, a 20% chance of tropical cyclone formation off the east coast of the U.S. and the Gulf Coast. That's a slight chance of tropical development potential. Then there's also the eastern Pacific is the area with more significant potential. Here's a look at that. For week two, we have a moderate chance of a tropical cyclone across the eastern Pacific. And this continues into week three, August 6th to August 12th, with a big area with a slight chance of tropical cyclone potential, but then a pretty significant moderate chance of tropical cyclone potential going off the coast of southwestern Mexico. Now here's a look at the MJO, because right now, nothing really happening. The eastern Pacific is actually unfavorable right now and for the next five days, but the most of the Atlantic is actually neutral, but it will be going towards an unfavorable environment going into July 30th. So in the next few days, it's actually getting more unfavorable, which makes sense why we're not really seeing tropical wave activity off the coast of Africa. The, the waves that do actually move off the coast are, are pretty weak. And then going into the beginning of August, August 4th, August 9th, you see the Eastern Pacific is where the favorable environment with the MJO is. The West Coast of Africa, not not super favorable until we get into August 14th to August 19th. So mid-August is when the MJO could start to become more favorable, really anywhere from August 9th, but especially August 14th to August 19th is where the MJO looks more favorable over Western Africa. And then it actually goes unfavorable again, going all the way into September. Now that part is really far out, so we really don't know, but if, if that were to happen, that's not promising for hurricanes. It's good for people in the Caribbean, people on the east coast of the U.S., places like that in the path of hurricanes, but not really looking very impressive for hurricane activity on the MJO forecast. But yeah, we'll have to watch mid-August for sure. That's a time frame to watch with the potential for a bit more of a favorable environment, potentially more intense tropical waves moving off the coast of Africa. Also, here's an update on the sea surface temperatures. Notice a lot of the extremely above average sea surface temperatures across this part of the Atlantic, the central subtropical Atlantic, have slightly cooled off just a little bit, I think, from what they were a couple weeks ago. And now it looks like the main development region is actually starting to heat up more significantly. But then we also have this, I guess they call it an Atlantic Nina, and that might that might pose a problem for tropical activity. I don't know, maybe producing more of that wind shear and drier air off the coast of Africa. But other than that, the Atlantic is seeing sea surface temperatures above average. The actual temperatures, we still have 80, 80 degree water temperatures extending past 40 degrees north, and then the main development region is, is pretty warm, going into the mid-80s, actually. Then we have mid-80s, even upper 80s, close to 90 degrees in the Gulf. That's actually the warmest part of the Atlantic where that would be the ideal place for tropical systems to intensify at this point. But yeah, so we do have the sea surface temperatures are definitely there for activity and also not just at the surface going down. We have a lot of upper ocean heat content or tropical cyclone heat potential. This is the Armour 3D tropical cyclone heat potential showing that, yeah, there's upper ocean heat content that goes above 40 degrees north across the central part of the Atlantic, and basically then the Caribbean and the Gulf are 
and even off the east coast of the U.S., especially off the southeastern coast, definitely a lot of tropical cyclone heat potential, upper ocean heat content, that energy there for for hurricanes to intensify. So once once the environment gets more favorable in terms of moisture and and lower wind shear, if some tropical systems are able to really take advantage of of all of this heat potential, we're going to have some pretty powerful hurricanes out there. And here's a look at the CFS model for the next six weeks. This is basically like that 40-day forecast for the MJO, but this is just for moisture, and it shows where a lot of the tropical activity could end up happening. We have for July 25th to August 1st, it's looking pretty dry across the main development region, across a big part of the Atlantic, even off the east coast of the U.S., really not promising for tropical activity at all for the next week, as we saw in the forecast models. Then going into August 1st to August 8th, that's week two. Still nothing really impressive from the main development region. We see a lot of that moisture going further west into the eastern Pacific, and that's going to be a big thing that we have a very strong high-pressure system over the Atlantic, and a lot of these tropical waves are just moving through and not necessarily able to do anything in the Atlantic. Then they go into the eastern Pacific, and it is more favorable over there. Then going to August 8th to August 15th, it looks like the main development region might start to activate. We might see more tropical activity coming from the main development region, moving towards the Caribbean and the Central Atlantic. So that'll definitely be something to look at. And then August 15th to August 22nd, not a whole lot of activity shown here, but this is four weeks out. So this is definitely subject to change. Then going August 22nd to August 29th, still kind of near to slightly above average in some places in terms of rainfall, slightly below average in in a lot of the main development region. This is where we would be looking for more above average precipitation to see hurricane activity, but it does look near to slightly below average. So potentially not very active for for a while, but there are definitely periods of time where we might see a couple of storm systems. August 29th to September 5th, this is the end of the forecast. We have slightly above average precipitation trying to move into the main development region and could potentially create some tropical activity out somewhere in the Atlantic or close to the Caribbean. So we'll, we'll have to see what happens there. The Eastern Pacific is going to be active, especially from August 8th to August 15th. According to the CFS model, that's where we're going to see a, a very active time frame for the Eastern Pacific. But yeah, so that's pretty much what's happening in the tropics. If you liked this video, please be sure to hit the like button. If you haven't already, share the video and make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for more weather updates on the tropics. Thanks for watching. Extreme Weather Zone, out.